Hello, good evening, guys. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, whatever your time zone is. This is the voice of your boy, Ken Akure. This is the Futures Made Easy class. And in today's class, we'll look at, we'll go deeper into technical analysis. Uh, we'll be looking at a trading edge. Why? Because I said in the, in the earlier class that technical analysis doesn't tell you exactly what the market will do next. In fact, technical analysis is so subjective that uh, it would be unwise to depend on it 100% because it doesn't tell you what the market will do next. It only tells you that there's a higher probability that one, that one thing will happen instead of another thing happening. So the, uh, the only way to function in this market and function properly is to take away anything that uh, makes you act in a way that suggests that you think you know exactly what the market is doing. And the way to do that is to create, to start with creating a single trading strategy that you stick with. Like you only have one trading strategy with defined rules. Uh, oh, what did I do? With defined rules. Sorry. With clearly defined rules that you follow religiously. Okay. So to do that, of course, you start with your normal uh, technical analysis uh, procedures, which is defining your zones, defining your key areas. Uh, like I said, if you're trading on, so, okay, this is my set of my, if you're trading on the H4, if you're trading on H1, for example, you come to H4, if you're trading on H1, you come to H4, then define your levels. So, and usually I advise that you mark up your charts every trading day. You know, why? Because you want to see the chart fresh each day. You want to see the chart with the clearer eyes, not with um, the bias that you had yesterday. And it's one thing that you're going to uh, have to deal with in the course of your trading career that you feel, oh, this thing I was thinking yesterday is also what is playing out today. Sometimes, you just need to come to the chart with fresh eyes. So most times I want to just delete everything from my chart. That's why using trading view is easy. Click on your doors, when you delete everything, then you try and do your markup afresh. With, um, so let's start. So now we're gonna define our trading area here. Yeah, a lot has happened. A lot has happened in the past few days, you know, but we want to now define our trading area to this point where price is right now. You know, so first we'll pick, we'll pick this low. There's a low here. There's a low here, you acted as a low here. So we're picking this low. We're picking this low, there's a low here. There was a support here, support, support. You know, then of course we'll look up here again, and this place can be like a resistance. We pick this area too. We pick that area too. Then uh, what are the other obvious areas? This area is an obvious area. We pick here too. So it's more like a zone. Uh, it's more like a zone. So since it's a zone, you can use your, your rectangle. So here too is more like a zone. So you want to make sure this is clearly defined as a zone. Now you've defined your trading area now, right now. Then later on, you can decide to take it a step further. 
maybe project when price gets out of here. So you can zoom in and add a step, a step, uh, one step below, another step above. So after all this here, the next level you have is here. Why? Because this is your support. This was resistance here. This is support here, acted as resistance under here. So you've defined this area. So I think this is okay for you to trade for today. So I haven't defined that on uh, your main time frame, which sorry, on a time frame higher, four times higher than the one you're trading on. So since we're looking for trades on H1, we'll now go to H1. Then on H1, we'll now try to identify minor levels, minor levels on H1. An obvious one will be somewhere here. We can choose to represent this with another color or make it dotted so that we we'll know that, okay, this is a minor level compared to uh, the tick line. So that's a minor level. Then of course, there's one here. This place acted as uh, some form of resistance is here and acted as some form of support here. So that's a minor level we we'll identify that here. Okay, haven't done that. Uh, haven't done that. Next, there are certain supporting tools that sometimes uh, can help you interpret price better. I know a lot of people don't like using indicators, but the truth is indicators are not bad. They are not, of course, they are lagging indicators and indicators that can um, misguide you, but indicators in themselves are not completely bad. They help you see things that if they were not there, you wouldn't have been able to see them, you know? And the, 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 the thing is don't just rely on them. You don't rely on anything in trading 100%. So the same thing with indicators, you don't rely on them 100%. You understand? But you don't rely on them at all. You only use them as extra confirmations. Then of course, uh, you can add your trend line. Drawing trend lines can be very, very subjective. So sometimes, uh, even if I have trend lines, uh, I rather focus on on my horizontal levels, instead of focusing on diagonal levels, I focus on more on horizontal price levels. Because trend lines can be subjective. Why? Why did I say so? Uh, someone could as well have drawn a trend line here. You understand? Know, so tell you, oh, this trend line is broken. But it's broken, but it price still went higher above here. You understand? So it's, it's quite subjective. But your horizontal levels, almost everyone can see the same level that you're seeing, you know, and that's what makes technical analysis work in that everyone is seeing the same thing and expecting similar reactions at certain places. Okay, now I haven't done this, uh, the indicators that I use, I call it my trading up with them. Uh, so let me add them. Um, so you come to F, uh, this indicators and strategies. So let's keep the first one. Uh, so when you come here, just start for moving average. Then there are different kinds of moving averages. There's moving average exponential, there's moving average. So this is a simple moving average. This is the one I use. You pick it. I use about two of them. Pick the second one too. Then you also type for TDI. Traders Dynamic Index. I'm going to teach you guys how to use it. T D I. T D I. Okay. There are many T D I's. How do we know the one that we're looking for? So the one I use is T D I by. Uh, okay. Let me see. Okay, Traders Dynamic Index by just Uncle L. 
Okay, so let's type it here. Traders dynamic index. That's the full meaning of TDI by just Uncle L. So the indicators you use often, you can favorite them so that you don't have to search for them anymore. So that's been favorited. So next time I just come to my favorites, then pick the one I want. So, so uh, okay, it seems we didn't pick that. So let's search for it again. Traders dynamic index by just Uncle L. We favorited it, so let's click on it. So that has been added down here. So now let's customize, let's define the parameters for our indicators. So first, let's go to the TDI. You notice once I put the TDI, the colors of this changed. Now the TDI works as an indicator. Uh, it can give you signals. Some people use the signals, others don't, depends on you. Uh, like when, okay, I'll explain how all that works. First of all, let's set our moving averages. So the first moving average, and I use the 200 simple moving average, 200. And I use it as a market baseline. I do not trade the crossover of moving averages. I use it as market baseline. So 200, then I define the color. I can make it um, any color we want. So let me make it um, purple. Purple, I can decide to make it thicker so that it's obvious. We've done that. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. I make this one 50. You know, I'll only change the length, then the style, I could make the style, um, we'll make it white. Okay, let's make it white. I'll make it thicker too. Then sometimes you want to adjust this. If you want it to be very visible, you move it all the way up to 100% so that the white line is very visible. Okay, then you can do the same thing for this. If you want it to be very visible or less visible, you know, you can just drag. So I usually want mine very full. Why? Because, uh, okay. Why? Because I can always hide, hide the indicators. Whenever I don't want them on my chart, I can hide them, then close. Then even this, I can decide to, uh, to hide this. So, okay, let's edit this. Let's edit this. So the way we edited the other one, so click on this. So this is Bollinger Band. Uh, the TDI, okay, let me talk a little about the TDI. The TDI is a, is a more advanced or a complex kind of RSI. RSI is Relative Strength Index. The normal RSI is an oscillator meaning it oscillates between two points, usually the oversold, the overbought area, which is from 70 upwards, and the oversold area, which is from 30 downwards. Then it usually has a middle line, which is like the pullback area, which is really around 50. So 50 is like a neutral zone or a pullback zone or a continuation. Uh, then 80 is oversold, overbought, uh, 20 below, sorry, 70 above is overbought, uh, 30 below is oversold. Now, the TDI was developed to give you a view of what is happening on the chart. So the TDI has all these lines. So this blue one is like your Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band you know, your Bollinger Band indicator that you can put on your chart. So now it's now being used as an oscillator. So this Bollinger Band serves as some form of support and resistance. 
you know, subaltern resistant. And by the time you begin to study it and observe, most times when price is at an area of resistance, like you see here, you will see that price is also close to this Bollinger band, this upper Bollinger band. Most times it coincides with resistance. Then when price is an, at an area of support, uh, most times, not all the time, like I said, most times it coincides of, uh, at, with being at the area of, sorry, at the lower Bollinger band. Then you have a middle line, which is this yellow line, which is referred to as market baseline. Do you understand? But then uh, I don't use that because why? Because I have created uh, my own market baseline, which is this 200 simple moving average. That's my market baseline. So I don't need another one on my oscillator. It's going to be confusing to me. So now this green line that you see here is the RSI line, is the RSI line. It can also refer to us as the, pr the price line. So the, that price line tries to mirror what price is doing. So if you notice, anytime you see a double top like we have here on your chart, you most times see a double top here, here too. Then this is very easy for citing divergence or weakness you know, on your chart. So anytime there's a push above your Bollinger band and a push below, if the next up doesn't keep pushing up above the Bollinger band and breaks below this red line, then you know that, oh, the bears have taken over this market. Now, for us to see this clearer, let's edit our TDI. Now, they are, they are, this can serve as an, uh, an indicator to is free. Uh, in that whenever this line, the green line crosses above the red line, it's a signal for buy. And you can see this blue here tells you, oh, buy. So this candle change blue, you know, and they keep pushing upward, it tells you buy. Then when it crosses below too, like it did on this candle here, uh, like it did here, this candle changes to red too, and it keeps printing a mixture of red and purple until it crosses back above like this, you know, but I don't use this signal because sometimes, you know, I want to generate my own signal. I don't want to blame the, the indicator for giving me a false lead. Do you understand? So I want to take charge, I want to take responsibility for my entries and my choices. So I remove all these um, signals that the indicator gives. Why? Because I can see it with my eyes. Whenever this thing crosses, I can see, I'm not blind. So there's no need waiting for the indicator to give me a color. So let, let's edit this now. So to make our Bollinger Band clearer, click on this, then scroll all this to 100%. It makes it much, much clearer. You do the same thing for the lower Bollinger Band. Click on this, move it up. Then for your market baseline, uh, I don't want to use it. It has its usage. Uh, I can give you guys videos on the TDI, uh, but I don't want to use it, so I close it. I don't want to see it. Why? I already have a market baseline that I'm relying on, so I want to just follow one market baseline. Then, of course, my RSI price line, this green one, I can make it more clearer. clearer than, then this is... Uh, signal line, strength signal line. That is the strength of the RSI, the signal line. Uh, I'll explain what it does. I want to make it thicker. Then I now come to bars, these colors that are changing. I don't want to see all that. So uh, I check this, I, I remove this. So I've removed it. You can see that the colors on your, can, on your chart, see that the colors on your chart have gone back to normal because I removed this uh, uh, indicator of bars. Then for my, okay, indicator alert, I don't need all this. I don't need all this. I don't need this. 
I don't need that. The lesser things you have, the better. Then for my levels, oversold and overbought levels, I can leave it as it is. But if you notice this is black and I'm using a black background, it will be obvious so I can make this white so that it's clear. Then my plot background. Plot background refers to like here now that you, you notice this cross below. You can see that this plot is red, red, red. So when it's red, it's telling you this market is going down. You shouldn't be trying to buy. Why? It's trending down. The IRS, the strength of this market is downwards. Why? Because your price line has crossed below uh, the strength, the RSI strength or RSI signal line has crossed below it. You can call it signal line, you can call it strength line. You know, that's crossed below. And I'll explain what these two lines mean as we we'll talk about the usage. So, okay. So now I'm gonna change this plot. I want to make it a little clearer. So I click on this plot. So I want to drag it. As I'm dragging it, as I'm dragging it, you can see from back here, somewhere here that the, the green is getting thicker. I want it to be as obvious as uh, it can. Okay, I think this is enough now. The opacity is enough. When I come to the red too, I drag also. You can see here, the red plot is changing. I drag also, I think that's fine. Then, okay. So I'm not adjusting anything more. So now I have my trading algorithm. So when price is at this red line, I'm expecting a pullback, especially after an extensive move. So what does that tell you? Now prices are support and this RSI is oversold. So if you missed your sell here, you know, because I know that there are some people that, okay, let's do this. This, are, this line is not clear. Let's make it another color, but thicker. Let's make it, um, can you make it red? No. Let's make it green. Okay, so there's actually a green line here. Let's make it thicker. Oh no, it's obvious there's a green line here. So this is support. So a lot of people like trading breakout. This market breakout, they wait for returns and they sell. Do you understand? So if, if this breakout happens and you notice that, oh, my RSI is sitting at this point, you now be very careful because at this level, it can pull back, back to around your 50. 50 here is your middle or pullback area. This market can pull back to this area and give you another selling opportunity. So instead of just as agree that you've missed out, you missed out here, you missed out here. So why jump in now? The action is late. Wait for, there's a break, wait for the retest. And of course, this is still sitting on some form of zone. So if you didn't catch this buy up here, up here, then here you can just wait to see how it will react. Anyway, that's it. Okay, so, um, on your TDI, let's explore the TDI. Um, let's, let's explore. So to look at the indicator only, you click on this. You can now see the indicator. So now there are actually some people that can actually, they've used the TDI to an extent, to the extent that they trust it so much that they can enter trades without looking at the charts. Just by looking at this TDI, they can tell you what the market is doing and they will place a trade based on this thing, this signal they get here. And it will play out, right? Because they've used it so often that they can, just looking at this, can tell what is happening on the chart. Now they'll be expecting the pullback here, then they continue sell. You know, they can tell you what is happening. Why? Because this blue Bollinger Band, upper Bollinger Band acts as your resistance the one below acts as your support. But like we know, support doesn't always hold. Like this support was broken here. Market is trying to retest it. 
Do you understand? Support. Then the green line is a, is a price line. It represents the time frame that you're trading on. So this green line represents price on one hour. This red line represents price on H4. Yeah, on H4. On H4. While the yellow line that I removed, which is the uh, market base line, represents time on uh, four, four times four. Uh, for them. That's 16 hours, or you can call it on the daily. So the slope of these lines tells you the direction of price within this time frame that you're looking at. So if this red line now tells you that, oh, on H4, price is slanting down. Of course, this green line tells you that on H1, price is forming some form of divergence. That's what this line tells you. Here too, it tells you, oh, price got to resistance here. Then it pulled back to an area of support, gave you a double bottom, cross back above uh, your signal line for a buy, enter. Do you understand? So that's how to use this. But then you don't use everything and rely on them 100%. You focus more on market structure. That's why when we started, what would you do at first? We drew our zones. We drew our zones, we drew our lines because that's what is more important than anything else. All these indicators can fail, they can mislead. But uh, your price will never fail or mislead. If you follow religiously, you, it, it will just be that, oh, this time around it didn't work, you know, but that it will just deceive you uh, now. So most times, if you check and you miss the trade, it's because you are not looking at uh, certain things properly. Like this trade I called in the morning, uh, I called the trade in the morning. I, I called a buy signal the other day, uh, day before yesterday, I think somewhere here, overnight, market came down, bounced up. So ideally, this is a resistance area and I should get out. But I was looking at something else. What was I looking at? I was too biased that this market should keep buying. So I expected, I was hoping that this support level, can you hear the word hope again? This is this is a, a, a resistance. This is a bigger, I was expecting that for this price to even start dropping, at least let it get to this top of this resistance zone. Uh, yeah, this is a zone. Let at least let it get to this top now at least let it get and fail, then I know it has failed. But market had other ideas. Meanwhile, if I was following the rules, so I saw this, this is resistance. So you have break of resistance, retest of resistance, then push up. So that's what I was expecting, you know? So when price broke below here, this is invalid. So the next thing, sell to the next zone. Why, no more questions. Now, let's put it all together now. So how do you play this strategy? First, you follow the rules. Number one rule for, for sell is that price must be at an area of resistance. That's number one rule. Price must be at an area of resistance. This area of resistance. Then number two rule is that price must be below your market baseline. This is your market baseline, this 200 simple moving average. Now, the reason for using market baseline is because not everyone, I'm telling you, not everyone can trade price action uh, fully without the use of indicators. Not everyone. You know why? There are certain supports you shouldn't buy. There are certain supports you shouldn't buy. Why? Because supports get broken all the time in a downtrend support will be broken in a downtrend. Support will be broken and retested in a downtrend. In an uptrend, resistance will be broken and retested. So if you are just selling at resistance because price is at resistance, then you're not using your support and resistance properly. Why? Because the trend is down. So buying and support most times isn't a logical thing to do. So the logical thing to do is to create something like a market baseline that tell okay, uh, to help you filter the kind of support that you buy. 
So that market baseline helps serve as a filter so that it's not every support that you're trying to buy. So the supports you buy are the supports that, okay, price is above this market baseline or around this market baseline. So I buy those kind of supports. So a good support to buy without even um, hesitating. So all through this place down here, yeah, there are many people who bought here, who bought here, nice. But then they were using another strategy, maybe a counter trend. Counter trend is when you go against the trend. Like when you buy against the trend, you know that the overall trend is down, but then you're taking a counter trend move. Why? Because price is at the key level and you notice some form of rejections, weeks, like you see here. So you're now buying the counter trend move up, hoping to sell into resistance, then hoping to sell back Con, uh, for the continuation of the trend. Now, that might seem good and easy, but for a lot of people, not everyone can do that. Why? Because uh, they want to just follow one strategy over and over again so that they can build confidence in themselves. So in that regard, you just create a market baseline that I have done, then you'll be using it as a filter. Get the word, you'll be using it as a filter for the support you're buying. So in this kind of market now, all through this place, if I from the 21st, okay, now, okay, that's the purple line. Then the white line is our 50 simple moving average and it acts as our secondary baseline. Secondary, primary baseline, secondary baseline. Why am I using 50 and 200? It's not because I like 50 and 200. The reason is because these are the indicators that a lot of people, a lot of traders in the market are looking at the 50 and the 200. So when you back test it, you can see that most times price will react. No, uh, most times rather the 50 will serve as a dynamic support or resistance. Here now, for example, you can see that it's serving as a dynamic resistance here, resistance. dynamic resistance, resistance here. The purple one served as a resistance here. See this white one here, serving as a resistance. You know, so what do you use that? You don't use, uh, just because it's serving as a dynamic resistance, use it to, to, um, to formulate your trade and say, oh, because it's there, you must sell. No, you now combine it with your support and resistance areas. So for example here, see price is at this bar here, but then you can see also that this coincides with an area of resistance. Why? Right? This was support before. Price was bouncing around the support, broke below it. Now price is retesting this support. Sorry, this broken support turned resistance and is coinciding with a dynamic resistance too. So this gives you more confidence in this trade. And also is serving as a secondary baseline. Now, why is it 50? If you've heard about the golden cross and the dead cross on Bitcoin, the golden cross happens when this your 50 simple moving average, this one crosses above the 200, like here now, this is the golden cross. But the traders that use this strategy and that's the strategy that a lot of uh, some big traders use to determine if, oh, is this a bear market or is this a bull market? So for them, once, uh, and of course they use the daily time frame. So let me go and show you how they use it. Now you can see this cross here now. This is called a dead cross. And whenever a dead cross happens, they are assuming that, oh, this bear market has started. So they are expecting a decline in price. Does it always work? No, nothing always works in trading. So let me show you, let me take you back to last year when the first golden cross happened. Okay, to tell you that it doesn't work all the time, this is 2019, this is 2019 or 2020. Uh, this is 2020, this is 2020. So 
you can you will see here that my chart is still loading. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead. You can see here that it crossed below here. When it crossed below, this was around November of 2020. When it crossed below, no, no, this is November of 2019. November of 2019. When it crossed below, a lot of people were saying, oh, are we going back to 3,000? Do you understand? But it crossed below, then what happens? It crossed back above. Uh, Isawa, are you guys with me? Hello, Isawa. If you can hear me, please type something in the chat box. Okay. Okay, I wanted to be sure. I'm not talking to myself. Okay, so now you can see that the moving averages are not to be relied on 100%. Why? Because what they call a dead cross, another dead cross happened here, but then it didn't play out. Instead, it was a counter signal. The dead cross happened late. This move had already happened. Then the dead cross happened. So those who were trading based on this dead cross, because when this move happened here, that's when some people now sell here, expecting price to keep going down. What happened? They were disappointed. Do you understand? So what am I trying to say? Moving averages don't work 100% of the time. Then all those things you hear about dead cross, golden cross, you shouldn't even bother about them. Any trading strategy that involves the crossover, when I mean crossover, one moving average crossing above the other, is not something you should really rely on. Why? Because by the time that crossover has happened, by the time that crossover happens, uh the move has happened already okay let me mute or mute you so please unmute yourself okay by the time that crossover happens the move has happened already like you see here so in respect to uh, a lot of things that you must have been seeing on YouTube, golden, uh, dead cross, blah, blah, blah. Check your chart. It has happened many times before and nothing happened. Nothing happened. So don't trade the moving averages crossover. Use them as a baseline. Use them as support and resistance, as dynamic support and resistance. Like you have here, it acted as a resistance here. Here, it acted as a support. Here, it's acting as a support. Here support. So that's what you use your moving averages for. Never as never as a, a strategy for crossover. So you can say, okay, this is my baseline. Once price is above this baseline, I'll keep buying, 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 buying. When price crosses below this baseline, then I'll be selling, 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 selling. That's a simple game plan. Now, let's go back to uh, this strategy we're doing. Let's go back to H1. Okay, now we're here. So you've uh, we're talking about the rules now. You've defined your key areas. To to do that without uh, interference, you hide your indicators. So everything is clear. Your trend line is broken. Price was at resistance. You tick the first one. Price was at at as a, an, at an area of resistance. And it has given, uh, this is a, 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 what's it called? This is a, um, an evening star. This candlestick pattern is called an evening star. These three of them is called an evening star. You have bullish, bearish, bearish and golfing. That's an evening star. So that's, another, that's a trigger signal. Then you want to check the other things. Is there any other extra confirmation? Then you now pull out your baseline. Is price below my baseline? Yes. So you have three things now. Then the next one, you pull up your TDI, which is your RSI. 
this RSI too is priced as an area of resistance on this place, on the Bollinger Band, yes. Then you check for extra confirmation. Can I see, can I see uh, a bearish engulfing, uh, sorry, can I see uh, a bearish divergence? You know, and what is divergence? Divergence is when uh, you, you see a bearish uh, divergence is happening. If on your chart, you have price going up, but then on, you, on your indicator, it is slanting down. So you can now say you have a bearish divergence. This is a, most times, this is a sign. If it happens around an area of resistance, this is a sign for further sell or a pullback. Now, now, okay, yeah. So when you see this, you see this evening star has formed. Then also you can see that, oh, price has crossed below and it's giving you a red plot, sell, 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 sell. If you don't have confidence in taking this trade, just get out of the, if you are, if you are buying before and you don't have confidence to start selling, just get out. Take your loss and just wait until you see something like this it crosses over, comes back down like it did here. Okay. Like it did here. Okay, let me hide. Let me hide this. Like it did here, you can see that here is shot out of your Bollinger Band, came back inside, pushed higher, but then didn't get to this other Bollinger Band then dropped. So for you to confirm a buy to, for you to confirm a buy to, now that it has broken out, you wait for it to go up a little, it might give you opportunity for sell, if it comes back, for you to consider it as a sell, even if you see, even if it closes above here, you will see that, okay, now it will do something similar that it did here, or do something like this. This time I didn't cross outside, went up, cross below the Bollinger Band and shoot up. But you can see this pattern is here. So most markets, especially Bitcoin, when it wants to do a reversal sign, most times it gives you that, um, uh, if, it's, if it's an, a downtrend, it gives you that M pattern. If it's down, it gives you that W pattern. Often, often, often. See here, you can see this uh, M pattern too. You can see it. You can see it on the chart too. Came down, give you, this is a higher M, then dropped. You always see it. You always, always, always. If you're trading on H1, even on H4, you always, always, always see it. Then to further reduce confusion, uh, because it have, uh, it, uh, it, it will take a while for you to say, okay, let me forget all the things I've learned about trading from all these years and stick to something new. So a lot of people tell you to do top-down analysis. By top-down analysis, you look at the daily, uh, you see what the daily is doing. You look at the weekly. All this is good, but sometimes it can be misleading. So sometimes I advise people just find not more than two time frames, H1 and H4, and stick to those two. Have your main time frame where you make trade decisions, then have one where you draw zones so that you can see the bigger picture. Because if you are trading just to catch small, small moves, small, small moves, you actually don't have any business looking at uh, something like the weekly. This would take a long time to play out. So why look at the weekly? Do you understand? Except maybe you're looking for other patterns like here too, this market has given us sign of bearishness. You can see it crossed below since over here. In fact, gave uh, divergence, you know, here. Well, let's continue. So, you come back to this is your time frame. So what are you expecting now? You're expecting the push up. Uh, maybe I personally respect that this market will push up, give a bearish candle maybe here, or 
maybe somewhere around here. Why? Because of this. Sometimes my push up today will close bearish, then tomorrow will come up like this. Give a sell trigger around here when this one to then this one too might have. This one to my heart, pull back up here, or even pull all the way here, while this Bullinga band will start facing down. Why? It has expanded, there's volatility. Anytime it's tightening up like this, expect an action. You know, then we'll look for a sell signal, then of course, make our entry. So let me stop this recording. Thank you guys for watching.